Baker's cyst, also known as a popliteal cyst, is a fluid-filled swelling that forms behind the knee, and it can look like this. It can cause pain, tightness, and sometimes swelling that extends down the calf. In this video, we're going to cover what a Baker's cyst is, what causes it, the symptoms to look out for, how it's diagnosed, and finally, the full range of treatment options, all the way from home care through to surgery. So let's start off firstly by answering the question, what is a Baker's cyst? Well, a Baker's cyst is a soft, fluid-filled lump that forms behind the knee in the area known as the popliteal fossa. Now, it's caused by a buildup of synovial fluid, the lubricating fluid inside the knee joint, which pushes backwards and collects in a small sac behind the knee. Now, you may also hear it being described as a popliteal cyst, but they are the same thing. Now these cysts can vary in size. Some are barely noticeable, whereas others form a visible bulge that can make the back of the knee feel tight or painful, particularly when straightening the leg or being active. So what causes a Baker's cyst? Well, a Baker's cyst usually forms when the knee joint becomes swollen or inflamed and too much fluid is produced. Now that excess fluid may then leak into the surrounding tissues, creating a cyst. Now, there are two main reasons typically why this happens. Firstly, knee injury, such as a cartilage tear or damage from sports or trauma. Well, secondly, underlying joint conditions, including osteoarthritis, especially in older adults due to age-related joint wear, inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis where the immune system attacks joint tissue, or gout, which is caused by uric acid crystals building up in the joint. Now, while Baker cysts are more common in people aged 30 to 70, they can also occur in children and younger adults. So now let's discuss some potential symptoms to look out for. Well, some people with a Baker cyst have no symptoms at all, aside from noticing a soft swelling at the back of the knee. But for others, it can cause a feeling of tightness or pressure behind the knee, pain in the knee or down the calf, or swelling, especially if the cyst is large, a clicking or locking sensation when moving the knee. Now, in some cases, the cyst can rupture or burst, and this allows fluid to leak into the calf, which can cause a sudden sharp pain, swelling and tightness, redness of the lower leg, although redness may be harder to spot on brown and black skin. Now, ruptured Baker cysts can resemble more serious conditions like deep vein thrombosis or DVT, which is where there is a clot in the leg. This is a really serious condition, so it is important to get checked promptly if you notice sudden calf swelling or pain or general pain in the leg. So when should you see your doctor? Well, you should see your GP or a healthcare professional if you notice a lump behind the knee that doesn't go away, you're experiencing pain, swelling, or clicking in the joint, you've had a recent knee injury, or you have signs of a possible rupture like calf pain or redness that we discussed just previously in the video. Then your doctor will examine the back of your knee and ask you about your symptoms and any known joint problems like arthritis. Now, in many cases, diagnosis can actually just be made clinically by the doctor assessing it, but sometimes further imaging is needed. This might include ultrasound scans to confirm the presence of fluid or an MRI scan if a deeper cause or complication is suspected. These can also rule out other conditions like a tumor, aneurysm, or DBT. So now let's move on and just discuss some potential treatment options. Well, not all Baker cysts need treatment. If you've got no symptoms and the cyst isn't affecting your movement, your doctor may recommend simply monitoring it. However, if you're still experiencing pain or stiffness, there are several treatment options, including self-care and medical therapies. So let's start off with some self-care at home options. So for milder symptoms, the following steps can help. Firstly, take over-the-counter pain relief such as paracetamol or ibuprofen. Secondly, apply an ice pack to reduce swelling, so a bag of frozen peas wrapped in a towel works well. Next, rest the knee and avoid overuse. You could also consider using a knee support, which you can buy from most pharmacies. Now, if you want to, I'd also advise you check out our video with Ella Boys, a qualified physiotherapist, on five exercises that you can do at home to help manage your knee pain secondary to a Baker's cyst, and you'll find this linked in the description box below. So now let's move on from home treatment to discuss medical treatment. So if the cyst is large or painful, or if home treatments haven't helped, your doctor might offer corticosteroid injections into the knee to reduce inflammation, 
or aspiration, which is draining the fluid with a needle, although this may be less effective for long-standing cysts with thick fluid. Now, if the cyst is caused by an underlying joint problem like arthritis, which is very common, managing this condition is crucial. Often, when the inflammation in the joint settles, the cyst will also improve as well. Now, if the cyst ruptures or bursts, treatment is usually supportive, and this will include rest and elevation of the leg, prescription of painkillers, like a combination of paracetamol and ibuprofen, and also general monitoring as the leaked fluid is generally gradually reabsorbed by the body, and this can take a few weeks. If there's any uncertainty about the diagnosis, so for example, whether the symptoms are due to a potential blood clot, your doctor may order an ultrasound to rule out a DBT. Now, in some rare cases, surgery may be needed, particularly if there's significant damage inside the knee or the cyst is persistent and causing regular symptoms that aren't improving with medical management. Now, the most common procedure is an arthroscopy, which is keyhole surgery where a camera called an arthroscope is inserted into the knee to repair cartilage or remove inflamed tissue. Removing the cyst itself is rarely done as it doesn't have a distinct lining and often recurs if the underlying issue isn't addressed. If you've got any questions about this topic, please leave them in the comments section and also please check out the description box of this video for more useful resources on Baker's cyst.